Today's class is about the different faculties in our mind from the yogi understanding. You see here we have on the bottom the green, our subconscious mind, which is formed from our memories, likes, dislikes, desires, habits, viewpoints. It's formed in the first years of our life where we are very dependent on our circumstances surrounding our parents and most likely it's also influenced even from the grandparents and their point of view in life. Without us realizing the subconscious which is called chitta in yoga is giving rittis up, subconscious thoughts. We see something, the subconscious mind is interpreting it and sending thoughts up. You see on the top, it's our conscious mind, things we are quite aware of. And we have also on the side the witnessing mind. The witnessing mind is the institution that just observes without judging, without creating any story around. In the middle, we have the red wisdom mind, which is called the buddhi in yoga. It's our intuition. It's that part of the mind with higher knowledge, solutions, overview, non-violence, love and kindness. That's that institution that works out of there. What happens in our daily life is that if something is a trigger, let's say, like this little blue car that I did write uh, down. Our subconscious mind reacts. Let's say my subconscious mind was programmed that blue cars are a danger. Because my grandmother, in the time of war, had Stasi coming in the blue cars. And that just was passed down unaware to my parents and to me too. So every time I would see a blue car, I would react with fear because that's how I got taught and wouldn't continue in a relaxed way, manner. If I wouldn't bring consciousness to it, any time a blue car would pass by, I would freak out. What we do in yoga, we have that witnessing minds and we may would feel, oh, there is fear coming up and we just would realize the fear. But then there is a break between the fear and the next action. And in that break, we can decide from our conscious mind or even from the wisdom mind what to do next. So practicing the witness mind really strengthens our ability not to be ruled by our subconscious mind and these riches. When we have our inner eye gaze to the third eye, we increase because we say that's where the wisdom mind is located. We even increase that ability to think more out of the wisdom mind. That's huge. We give energy to that wisdom mind. And the stronger the wisdom mind, our consciousness and our witness mind becomes, the stronger also or the less influence our subconscious mind has. Subconscious stuff is often stored in the back of our body in our joints, we release that with the movements. The witness mind people describe from sometimes from the heart to watch or from one of the sides to watch. You can figure that out for yourself where you think your witness mind is located. What we aim to is to bring as much conscious mind into our life, 
being aware of what we do, what we say, how we react. And yoga can help us immensely in that path. Every time you watch your breath, you strengthen your witness mind and your conscious mind. Every time you don't react on something, you have created a conscious decision. Just listening, observing, without reacting, creating a story around it, judging, you have strengthened your conscious mind and your wisdom mind. The more you are in conscious mind, the bigger the wisdom mind will come with time. So let's take it into our practice and every time when you gaze to the inner eye gaze you will see to support the wisdom mind. Anytime when you are the silent observer you are really getting out of that subconscious state of mind. Let's enjoy a beautiful flow. Let's start in prep to lower. Tuck your tailbone, glide back, when your hands go past your knees, lift your heels and roll back vertebra by vertebra. Stay still at center or rock from side to side. Back at neutral, lower your feet down, partial recline. Bring your hands to your abdomen and invite your breath down into your lower abdomen. Your subconscious mind may still send some thoughts up. That's the nature. The witnessing mind is witnessing these thoughts, letting them pass through. And with our inner eye gaze to the third eye, we just enhance that witness mind, giving energy to it. If you're inhaling, your abdomen rising. Exhaling, your belly going in. Complete breath. The lower, middle, upper lungs. Feel you are consciously breathing, your conscious mind follows the in, how it flows into your body and how it expands. And your conscious mind also follows the breath flowing out. We could also say it's mindful, the full attention is with that breath. Ucha E breath, exhaling, create a little R sound. Inhaling, imagine the breath goes to the back of the throat and up to the third eye. Another stimulation for your witness mind. Extend your right leg forward, 
Inhaling, lift your leg up, flex your foot and exhaling, lower down. Repeat, in to lift, your individual length of in, X to lower. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Silent observer observing your breath. Next time when you're up, anchor rotation. Change direction. Apply a belt, towel, anything that you can leap over your ball of the foot and hold. First align your physical body, left knee and hip aligned, sacrum grounded. Natural wave in your spine, shoulders relaxed. Then align your minds in the eye gaze to the third eye. Silent observer, observing body sensation and breath. Exhaling, release your belt, release your leg down. Tranquility. Observe the body sensation and the quality of your breath. Exhaling, right side, partial recline, left. Ground your lower back, raise your heels and bring your knees in. Exhaling, partial recline. Extend your left leg along the mat. In to lift. X to lower. Repeat. The subconscious breath would maybe be a shorter breath. But bringing that consciousness into your breath, the mindfulness into your breath, allows you to really make your breath your longest in and your longest ex. Next time when you're up, anchor rotation. Change direction. Apply the belt over the ball of the foot and hold. Complete Ujjayi breath, inner eye gaze to the third eye.
your next exhalation, release the belt, release your neck, tranquility, observe body sensation, observe the quality of your breath. Exhaling, step in left, partially climb, knees to chest. Extend your left arm along the head. Right arm releases to the side. Move your knees towards the left. Vertebra by vertebra. The hand is following your right hand. Sorry, your right hand is following. Extend your top leg. And with the round spine, come up. Place your hands behind you. Prep to lower and we repeat the rolling up and down alternating sides. So if you want to watch one round, please just stop for a moment and watch. Knees to chest. Right arm behind your head. Rolling with your knees to the right. See that they lower at hip level. Let your arm land in front of the chest. Top leg extends. The relaxed spine comes up. Both hands first place themselves behind the body. Both feet. And then you start again. Prep to lower. Let's repeat one more each side. Arm extends, the other arm relaxes next to the body. Knees twist towards that extended arm side, vertebra by vertebra rolls to the side. Top leg extends, the spine relaxes, rolls up, the arms place behind and the feet parallel and start again. Watch that you go with this moment-to-moment -moment awareness. That's a silent observer, really bringing mindfulness into every little step. You finish each movement, let's say the extension of the arm. I don't alternate sides because, so you can see better, but you alternate sides. You finish bringing the legs to the side. You finish letting your spine follow and placing the hand. Then you finish extension of the leg. Relaxed spine comes up. Keep the spine relaxed while you place your hands. Then bring your feet parallel. And you are back at the front. From here, cross quad. Lift up, coming forward into cat. Exhaling cat tuck, round from the base to the top. In cat. Ex cat tuck. In cat. Hands in Guru Mudra, fingers wide spread. Feel each vertebra and cat tuck is pushing up. Lengthen from the base and feel 
each vertebra from the base to the crown is lengthening. Synchronize breath and movement, the length of the exhalation to round your spine to cat tuck. The length of your inhalation to lengthen your spine into cat. Next time when you're in cat, sway back into child, sit bone stretch back, chest forward, release vertebra by vertebra. Find your arm position, arms forward or back before your head is lowering. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Complete Ucha E breath. Exhaling, roll up, prep, natural seat. In, lengthen from the base. Ex, hinge forward, reach with the arms. Then the body is lifting, prep, cat bow one. Ex, bow down. In, lift up. Feel the shoulders want to be over your hands. Check in. How long is that exhalation to go down? Hold a little break. And then inhaling. Feel you don't rush up. Really use that lifting up as a strengthening. Inner eye gaze, can you keep that inner eye gaze to the third eye? Mindful breathing and mindful alignment. Next time when you're up, sway back into child asana. Hands turn forward, relax vertebra by vertebra. Your next exhalation prep natural seat. Curl your chin in, round your neck, chest, lower back to come up. Lengthen from the base, vertebra by vertebra. Hands to the heart, lift your neck and hat. Hinge from your hips, take your blocks, sway back, mountain lift, mountain. Raise both heels up. Exhaling left side mountain heel press. In lift your right, lower your left. And now alternate. Press down with these heels so you get a good stretch through the Achilles into your calves. Next time when you're back from your left, raise both heels, 
Then lower your heels down, hold mountain asana. Exhaling, cat tuck, round neck, chest, lower back, come down. In cat, lengthen from the base. Finish cat, release your toes, sway back into child. Arms find a position, hands their mudra before your head lowers. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Silent observer with the breath and body sensation. Exhaling prep natural seat. In lengthen. Ex hinge forward, cat. I just make a quarter turn. You can do the same if you feel that is helpful for your pose. Step out with your right foot to the right. Half pyramid. Hinge back with your hips and lift up. Interlace the fingers in front of you, turn your toes up, lift your arms up. Move your hips to the left, shoulders to the right, into gait. You could have your hand on the block or on your leg. Sometimes the block is really helpful so that we don't push on the knee. And your fingers, I just bring my block to the front so you can see your fingers could be on the fingertips, that gives you a bit more height, or on the palm. Also, if you feel very stiff in your hips, it could be that you just go straight up. And you just work on, this is your maximum on flexion here. However, if you have more flexion and that leg goes in and your baseline goes out, hips move forward, Shoulders back. Long deep breath. Listen to the sound of your ucha e. Relax where you don't have to hold. Find that ease in your stability. From here, Push with your hand down, pull your right foot in, then bring your right knee over the ankle. Bring your right forearm onto your thigh. Now here you may feel you want to reach really forward, but then you collapse here. See how far do you want to bring that forearm in, so you can really feel length and holding here in your core. Let your breath flow. From here, stay with your legs as they are and bring your shoulders over the hips, arms T. Turn your head, look over your middle finger. Feel the front foot pushing forward, the knee pushing down, your spine reaching up, the shoulders relaxing. Beautiful. From here, lower your arms down, extend your right leg, turn the toes forward. Inhaling forward, salute. Ex half pyramid. Move, remove your block. Bring your right leg back. And I just turn around again, just so it's more visible for you. 
Extend your right leg back, prep. Extended cat bow. Exhaling, elbows back, chest forward. Extended cat bow. In, even flowing push up. Let's go once more. Check that your breath is flowing. Even flowing exhalation. Just go the far down that you can symmetrically right and left hand push up. Last one. Cat. Sway back into child. Your next exhalation, prep natural seat. In lengthen. Hinge forward from your hips, reach with the arms, bodies last. Prep extended cat. Moving out with the left leg to the side. From here, hinge back, raise your heels, shoulders at the same time. Inhaling, lift. You know you can anytime stay here. That's for a lot of hip enough. You see here we have a multiple hip opening. We have an abduction, moving the leg away. We have an outer rotation or a lateral rotation. And then we add inflection to it. So that's a lot of hip movement. So don't worry if that flexion is too much for you. You still get a good stretch. If we think of our minds, that would be our subconscious maybe saying, oh no, that's not good enough. Our ego mind saying, no, you have to perform to the best. But in yoga it's not like that. In yoga it's where do you get a good stretch that we create more energy flow. And that's the perfect pose for you. Beautiful. From here, put your weight onto your plop, glide in with your foot. And if you bring that leg in more, you have a shortest distance here and less stretch. If you glide your in, foot in less, you get a more stretch here. So just see what's the right for you. And then again here, feel you don't want to sag here. You really want to push yourself out. You want to tone your core. Push with your feet in opposite direction. Hips down, crown of the head up. Beautiful. From here, stay with your legs as they are. Just bring your shoulders over the hips, arms, T. Look over your middle finger. Long, deep breath. From here, straighten your leg, release your arms down, toes turn forward, in forward salute, X half pyramid, bring your left leg back into prep for cat bow. Exhaling, the leg lifts while the chest lowers. 
in lift up. Feel there is, you don't have to go all the way down. There is that point that you can even flowing come up so that your right hand and left hand is carrying even weight. If you go too far down, you may be wiggle up. Cat, sway back into child. Your next exhalation, prep natural seat. In, lengthen from the base. Hinge forward from your hips. Bring your knees, feet out to the side and then your knees out to the side and sit back into tortoise. Most of people need to sit on a pillow or block in tallness. Inhaling arms T. X right upper arm on top of left. Bring the back of the hand together or the palms. Shoulders down, elbows up, breathe. Inner eye gaze to the third eye, complete Ucha Ibra. Your next inhalation, straighten your arms, turn the palms towards each other, bend your elbows, bring your hands in, shoulders back and down, lengthen through the thighs of your neck. Inhaling arms T. Exhaling left arm on top of right. Shoulders bagging down, elbows up. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Complete Ucha Ibra. Straighten your arms, turn the palms towards each other, bend your elbows and bring your hands in, shoulders back and down. Hands towards the chest. Release your arms, inhaling upward salute. Exhaling, flowing on release. Round your spine, bring your knees in, come forward into cat. And from cat we go into penguin. So Foamy mats underneath the knees, carpets, double mats are really good. I'm going to stay this way just that you see the alignment. From here, push with the feet into the mat to lift your knees. Bring your knees out to the side. Let your feet follow. And then let your knees go out to the side and see how my hips stay in line with my knees. They don't go back or forward. And the ankles are also in line with the knees, they don't go in. Now prop yourself up to your height so that your shoulders and your hips are on line. Bring your hands into a mudra. 
You can stay here if you get enough stretch. You just breathe and stay here. But if you feel you want to move, you can tuck the tailbone and release and sway with your hips forward, backwards or to the side. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Complete Ucha Ibra. Anytime when you feel too much tension, you can come out of the pose. Often for the knees, it's good when you bring your hand underneath the knee and lift it up. That just places the knee on a better spot. Go for both sides, of course. If your blocks are too high, you can lower them. Just make sure that you maintain shoulders and hips one line and that you don't overarch in your lower back. So core muscles are often really good to engage if you have any tendency to collapse in your lower back. Relax where it's, you can find ease in the body. Facial muscles, neck, shoulders. Then point your toes and flex your foot. And next time, when you have pointed with your feet, just move your feet together. You can go as low as you need. Big toe side of your feet grounded. Feel that inner heel grounded. And of course the soles of the feet don't have to come all the way together. It's just the direction they move towards. Sense the new stretch, the new sensation. Breathe into the area of your tension. Beautiful. From here, place your hands underneath the shoulders, push up, and then sway with your hips back into a wide tortoise. Sometimes the knee needs to come a little bit more together. If so, just do the necessary. And from here, push with the hands into the floor, lift both knees at the same time together. Still in tallest, sitting next to the heels, maybe on a bolster or block. And then come into tallest forward bend, hinge forward from the hips. Keep your lower back straight. And if your flexion in, in the hips is bigger, you can roll forward with your hands so that your abdomen is coming onto your thighs. And then you can rest your forehead on the mat or a block. So 
If it's easy to you for you to bend forward, the full forward bending is the right. You can do anything in between if you have to still work on the length of the lower back. For some people it would look like this, the forward bending. That's wrong alignment, so you, you work on lengthening the lower back. And with the lower back you fold forward. And there where you are, that's fine. Let the energy, the breath flow. Our subconscious mind and ego mind would be maybe a very judgmental mind. But remember, in yoga we don't want to judge. We want to feel where is the alignment right so that my energy is flowing. You don't have to fight against your body, just accept. The wisdom mind is a very accepting mind. Accept where you are, what problems are in the body, your physique, your issues, and with that you work. And you relax around that area so that you don't create any more tension. We release and relax around that area. Your next exhalation, roll up into tortoise. Hinge from your hips. Come forward into cat. Let's actually tuck the toes, move your hips forward and stretch your legs up. and then lower your knees, sway back. Sit next to your heels, sway back, keep knees and ankles together and bring your feet forward. Straighten your legs into L seat. If you need, sit onto your pillow Just turn around so you can see me better. Right knee comes out to the side. In butterfly, left leg straight. And from here, vertebra by vertebra, twist towards your right. Feel from your pubic bone the first vertebra and go up the spine. Let your hands follow. Relax your back, open your chest, relax the shoulders down, there where you feel tension, release. And then use your arms as a leverage to intensify your twist. Kapalabhati. Last pump, followed by a long exhalation out. In D, X unwind vertebra by vertebra. Hinge forward from your hips over the long leg. And as we discussed in the tortoise forward bend, same here. Long lower back, really hinging from the hips, bringing abdomen and thigh together. And don't push. Just feel where is that edge that it feels comfortable. Feel the spine is orientating itself on the inside of your neck. You can have your belt over the ball of the foot, your hands or the hands on the side. And then 
Find stillness. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Complete Ucha Ibra. From here, point your toes, relax your spine, come back. Bring your right knee up, straighten your leg, L seat. Point your toes, relax your spine, bring your left knee in. Bring your left knee out to the side, extend your spine. From the very base of the spine, twist towards your left vertebra by vertebra, place your hands, intensify your twist using your arms, feel that the tension is in the back and just think of you with each breath, give a little injection to release. Imagine like an acupuncture needle going to the center of the tension. Kapalapati. Empty all the way out. Inhale deep. X unwind vertebra by vertebra. Hinge forward from your hips. Apply all the principles of forward bending. From here, point your toes forward with the relaxed spine, come back up, lengthen from the base, relax your spine, bring your left knee up, step in with your right, hip lift to the front of the mat, for prep to lower. Your blocks next to you. Exhaling, knees to chest. Knees out to the side, rock from side to side.
back to neutral. Release your feet down to the floor. In bridge, roll up vertebra by vertebra. Eggs lower down. Repeat. Next time when you are up, stay bridge asana. Place your blocks to support your bridge or hold with your muscular strength. In a gaze to the third eye, complete Ujjayi breath. Your next exhalation, lift your hips, undo your blocks and lower down, partially climb. Knees to chest. Your next exhalation, reclined butterfly. If you like, place a pillow underneath your hair. Inner eye gaze to the third eye. Complete Ucha Ibra.
Decide whether you want to stay in recline butterfly or bring your knees back into knees to chest. And then release your feet down to the floor for a final relaxation in tranquility. Legs met with the part. The blocks could be applied underneath the thighs which, or knees, which really nice for your lower back. The arms away from the body with space in your armpits or the hands in a mudra on your chest. Facial muscles relaxed, shoulders and arms relaxed. Heart space relaxed. Abdomen relaxed. Pelvic girdle relaxed. And relaxation down through your thighs into the knees, calves, ankle and feet. Inner eye gaze remains to the third eye. The breath a natural, effortless breath. Silent observer observing the breath.
Start movement in your body. Come into knees to chest. to the side and find your seat. For today, feel the vibration of the OM at your third eye. spirit, peace in your mind, peace in every word, and peace with every feeling in your heart. Namaste.